Finally, we are here. Cerebral is now officially launched as a production-ready framework for building complex web applications. After almost two years of development, we can with great confidence say that this is a tool that can help you build complex applications. It has been running in production on multiple projects for quite some time now, and we have worked very hard on giving you a good introduction on the new website. In this video though, we are going to talk about the why. Why would you even consider Cerebral as a framework for building your application? Specifically, we are going to point out three things. First of all, how Cerebral gives you greater insight into how your application actually works. Then we will bypass the typical hello world and counter example. We will rather go straight to what Cerebral helps you with, complexity. We will finish off by talking about how you and your fellow team members can go about collaborating on a Cerebral project. This is the traditional to-do MVC application, but with some minor tweaks. We need to have some asynchronous behavior, because what web application does not have that? The Cerebral debugger on the right side is currently showing the model of the application. And as you can see, it is just an object. That is because Cerebral uses a single state tree to store all the state of your application. When I now change the state of the input, you can see the model updates live in the debugger. When we now move on to the controller, we can see a list of signals fired. A signal is what indicates a request for state change in your application. The latest signal changes the new to-do title path with the title passed into the signal. If I now hit enter, we will see a more complex flow. It created a new to-do optimistically and then posted it to the server. When the server responded, we got an ID which we merged into our optimistically added to-do. We can also see that if the server gave an error, it would have marked the to-do with an error. When we look at our view tab on the left side, we can see all the state paths that are currently active in the application and what components are affected by any change on them. On the right side, we can see a log of updates to our components and what state path changes cause them to happen. So as you can see, the debugger gives you a lot of insight into your running application. But now, let us talk about complexity. On one application I have personally been working on, we have an activity log page. First of all, we want to indicate that we are downloading data from the server. Then we want to download the current user logged activities, available activities and favorite activities in parallel. And if any of them fail, we want to notify about that. When everything is done, we unset the loading state. So let us see how this looks in code. First of all, you may notice that this looks very much like the notes in the slide. These chains, as we call them, behaves very much like a decision tree. We use arrays and also objects, as you will see later, to describe this decision tree. What we also can see here is how we can compose in other chains. We have other signals that also wants to get this data. So we have split them into separate chains and composed them in using the spread operator. Let's look at one of these chains. We are using an object to express the possible outputs of success and error of getting the activities. You can actually define whatever outputs you want, so it's not only limited to asynchronous AJAX requests and success and error. But let us move on to an even more complex example. Webpackbin is a service built with Cerebral. When a bin is opened, a lot of things might or might not happen. Let us quickly read through the list here. First, we set a state to initialize the bin and hide the welcome message. If this is a different bin than the previous, we need to load up the new bin. We do so by first displaying a loading indication and also a snack bar message to the user. Then we actually grab and set the bin data. Then we need to remove the loader and also put the current file to the first index, as the previous bin you were on might have selected a file index out of range of this new bin. Then we need to check if this new bin is a live bin and if so connect to it. But if not, we will just run the bin. So how does this look in code? 
Again, you can see that we describe things very much like we did in the slide, as a decision tree. We are also composing a run bin chain here. Let us look at that as well. So here we have either joined a live bin requesting an update or we post the current code to the server. The server tells us if it created a copy of the bin, it needed to fetch some npm bundles or that we are okay to continue. As you can see, this is quite complex, but everything is written as it happens and we can reuse chains where it makes sense. But did you notice here? There is not a single line of actual implementation. These chains are just declarative descriptions of what should happen. The actual implementations are inside the functions we reference. We call these functions actions. So describing the flows in your application is actually much like putting labels on a decision tree. Also worth mentioning is that even with this complex flow, the debugger will display it as one coherent flow with all the actions, inputs and outputs, all the outcomes and all the state changes. So now let us create our own little temporary team. We just got a mock from our designer about a model for creating posts. Let us talk about how this should work. A good start is to talk about the state needed. First of all, we need to know if we should show the model or not. Then we need to display the points, which change based on adding text, a link and or an image. Then we need state for the text, the link and an image URL. At the bottom right, we can choose a category, so we need to know which one is chosen. Since we can upload an image, we need to show a loading indication when actually uploading it. And also publishing the post will take a little bit of time, so let us add a state for indicating that as well. And of course something can go wrong, so we need to display an error if it occurs. Now, that was not much of a discussion, but you can imagine us doing this live. You might not agree with the state names I chose, or maybe you would have pointed out a missing state. Maybe you wanted to show a progress when uploading the image, for example. The important thing is that not only me personally get ownership on this, we both do. And this is important when working in teams. It ensures that more than one developer gets insight into how an implementation will be done and we uphold naming and structure conventions. So the next part of the collaboration process is to decide what requests for state change can be done, or in other words, what signals can be triggered. This post model is actually a pretty complex implementation, so let us just look at a couple of signals. First of all, the user can change the text, so let us create a text changed signal. Since the first state change here is quite simple, we use a cerebral operator to express that we copy the text passed to the signal into our state tree. But we also want to update the points. Let us reference an action for that, which we can later implement. Now let us look at the published signal. First we want to set the application to publishing state and then run an action for posting the data to the server. If it is a success, we update the post with the ID returned from the server and we also close the model. Though if something goes wrong, we rather update the error and display that. Again we see how we are able to describe everything that should happen without actually implementing it. This makes it a lot easier to collaborate and give ownership to the implementations of the project. Maybe now we would split up where I would implement the components for the UI and you would implement the chains and actions based on our discussion. So now you have gotten insight into three things that separate Cerebral from other frameworks out there. If this made sense to you, there are more to explore in the world of Cerebral so please jump over to the website and go through our tutorials and other documentation. Thanks for listening and happy developing!